A arte e tecnologia democratiza as formas de fazer arte. Mas hoje, com tudo mudando tão rápido, como é que o artista consegue fazer isso? Cada vez mais a gente tem mais artistas, mais gente fazendo coisas que querem ser consideradas como arte. Será que ele tem que fazer arte sobre a tecnologia? Ou será que ele tem que usar a tecnologia para fazer arte? Eu acho que no mundo de hoje, você já precisa ter uma proposta. Não adianta só usar a tecnologia. Os artistas sempre tiveram um papel fundamental até de pensar à frente do seu tempo, apontando caminhos para onde a sociedade iria. Só que nesse mundo em que a tecnologia anda tão depressa, como é que fica o papel do artista? Ao mesmo tempo, a tecnologia passou a permitir que muito mais gente conseguisse fazer criações artísticas. Então tem um novo contingente de artistas, especialmente aqueles que nasceram depois de 1986, que já usam a tecnologia de uma forma muito mais integrada com as suas próprias vidas. E a grande questão é, como é que esse mundo da arte, tão fechado em museus, galerias, vai conseguir receber essas pessoas? Aliás, dá até para perguntar como é que é possível fazer arte sobre tecnologia. Será que isso é possível? Hoje em dia, há várias instituições em várias cidades do mundo todo que são responsáveis por formar artistas para pensarem a questão da arte e da tecnologia. Aqui em Nova York, por exemplo, você tem o IBIM, que é um dos mais importantes do mundo, treinando e convidando pessoas para desenvolverem projetos pensando nessa relação nem sempre harmônica entre tecnologia e arte. The core of our program is actually a residency and fellowship program where we invite artists and other creative technologists in to come and work with us for periods of time between five months for a residency and um, a year for a fellowship. So we've got a really awesome learning and engagement program where we do workshops and forums and seminars and book launches, talk about ideas and learn to make new stuff with new audiences. We try to choose a group of people who have diverse skill sets. So we're interested in artists who have awesome software skills or hardware skills, artists who work with robotics or artists who work on the web. We have a range of research groups around issues to do with sustainability, around issues to do with art and activism. Most recently I've been working on a project that's Uh, sort of began with a website called Three Frames. The website just uh, allows people to make an animated GIF using their webcam. So it just pops open this little module that lets you capture frames from your webcam and then set the timing of it and then uh, turn it into an animated GIF. A month ago, I released an iPhone app um, related to the website. I just hold this up to here, tap this three times, and then I can press play and I can adjust like the speed. I click submit here and it uploads and you'll see here, watch this. And most recently, this last weekend, had an installation at a party here at Ivy. One, two, three. So there's cameras all around. There's eight cameras total. And so all these cameras take a picture all at once. And so when the individual cameras are stitched together into an animation, it looks like, you know, a 360 degree spin around. One, two, three. Everything that's made on the website becomes part of this really big, constantly updating gallery of everything else that everyone's ever made on the website. One of the things that is also interesting to a lot of the artists who work here is that they will release a project and get audience feedback and then they'll re-release it with new ideas, whether it's software or, or hardware. O IBIM, ele não tem medo, por exemplo, de trazer artistas que são de contracultura. E um exemplo é esse mexicano chamado Fran Illich, que faz um trabalho muito interessante e provocador. Ele tem inventado conceitos que a gente acha que são atrelados ao mundo real, mas de uma forma absolutamente virtual. 
The kind of work that I do is very experimental, like really. I made this kind of like little Goldman Sachs, which has investment banks, we do import exports, we have crops of corn. There are like probably 80 persons working on this. There are like 75,000 units of this currency that are being traded completely online. And there is a central bank that has a reserve. Ao inventar esse conceito completamente louco e totalmente virtual, ele começou a ter valor e as pessoas começaram a dar dinheiro para aquele conceito. We now have over $30,000. We produce completely over the internet with works of art, with media, with markets. This money, which is, which is immaterial, which is completely virtual, is backed by real money and it's generating riches or wealth which is measured in our own values. But basically, all of this is an art project. Trans perfect example of a cultural practitioner who really creates a platform. Right? So he's interested in civic engagement, he's interested in activism, he's interested in thinking about financial systems, about farming systems. Like, who would think that in, a, in, in this kind of context? But the way he ties that together then wouldn't be possible without technology. Quando a gente pensa em arte tecnológica, a gente pensa em software, computador, mas a gente nunca pensa, por exemplo, nas ruas da cidade. E hoje a tecnologia está em toda parte. Então você tem artistas como Aaron Bartle, que usa a rua da cidade como um lugar onde você pode trocar informações. Nesse mundo em que a tecnologia anda tão depressa, Como é que fica o papel do artista? Tem um novo contingente de artistas, especialmente aqueles que nasceram depois de 1986, que já usam a tecnologia de uma forma muito mais integrada com as suas próprias vidas. Dá até para perguntar como é que é possível fazer arte sobre tecnologia. Será que isso é possível? Quando a gente pensa em arte tecnológica, a gente pensa em software, computador, mas a gente nunca pensa, por exemplo, nas ruas da cidade. E hoje a tecnologia está em toda parte. Então você tem artistas como Aaron Bartol, que usa a rua da cidade como um lugar onde você pode trocar informações. O legal do trabalho do Aaron é justamente fazer essa conexão entre a força da arte de rua, que já é uma arte democrática em si, com a força da arte tecnológica, que também é democrática. Deadrop is an anonymous offline peer-to-peer -peer file sharing network. It's just a little USB flash drive. I cement it into a wall and the idea is that I take my laptop and I can plug it into the wall to the USB drive and find files or drop some files. People drop personal pictures or items. I had job application on there. On this website, deadrops.com, you can submit your dead drop you've done and then it'll be on the map and it'll be in the database and people can look it up and go to that place and see what's on there. A lot of layers in this project you can talk about and discuss. Today we are connected with our phones and whatever, Facebook everywhere, but the moment you take some files and you cement it into a building, somehow the whole building becomes a flash drive. And at the same time it's this play, you go out in the city and try to find this uh, USB drive. Um dos artistas que são mais interessantes e intrigantes é o Ryan Tricartin, que é um americano nascido no Texas e que usa a tecnologia de uma forma muito interessante dentro do seu trabalho. Ele usa muito maquiagens e personalidades que não são dele própria. Então ele incorpora personagens um pouco para mostrar como todo mundo acaba fazendo isso online. Mas a grande questão sobre a obra do Ryan é que ele nos faz pensar sobre como a tecnologia está mudando a nós mesmos. How do you see the internet as an artist? 
and how does it impact your your work? I don't see it as an other. It's like inherently a part of who we are, and it's a part of our being, and it's an extension of our bodies. The internet pr is providing so many sort of new mediums and new opportunities and platforms to expand and um, create. And I think it's making people much more collaborative in spirit. And I feel like that's really exciting. Remember in the past, we showed you your life better with edit. With edit. How do you think like uh, these multiple layers of identity actually translate into your work and what is how does it relate to the online life? As we start to exist in multiple spaces and um, interact within different realities. The thing that starts to define you is like your accumulated personality or your accumulated structures. We're kind of moving more towards defining ourselves by like a larger vibe of who we are rather than like an understanding of the body or something. Because the body's been expanded and so has like the location of it. Always in the moment. Always. Always, always. How do you find all those people? Like, uh, there's children, there is like uh, people for, of all sorts. Some people are like actors that we hire. Um, and some people are family members or friends of friends. A lot of them I did meet on the internet. You actually made your videos available online. Do you think that was important for your career? It would make sense to, you know, share with the communities that are, that inspire the work. And the best way, obviously, to do that is to just post it online. And, and obviously, the internet's a huge inspiration to the work. In a career sense, it like would be outrageous to not put it online. Os artistas hoje estão mais preocupados em desenvolver questões a partir do uso das novas tecnologias que se reflitam na política, na economia, na sociedade e na estética, na própria arte. Então fazer a arte só pela ferramenta, sem pensar nesse outro lado de como ela se relaciona com as nossas vidas, também está ficando um pouco sem graça. Já dá para dizer até que está ficando um pouco obsoleto. A lot of the artists who we work with, they're often creating platforms rather than actual an art object to put in a gallery as a commodity item. They're often using technology as a platform so that other people contribute their ideas and their content. And I think that's kind of new. The digital artworks are getting stronger and stronger in that, in that field. And I think it's important to, to look at this. Of course, it's, it's a question of curators and collectors. What's their relation to the digital sphere? Like, did they grew up with it or not? It's still a big difference in, in how people are used to art in the art market. Galleries and museums, are they ready to show people who are working with new media? I just feel like naturally the segregation is going to go away because that would be a false dialogue to have a whole art, historical art from like here to 20 years in the future and not have the internet be a part of that would just make no sense. I mean, when you're contextualizing some sort of idea, you can't avoid the way the internet has changed that idea.